This season on Too Fat for 15, Fighting Back. It's an addiction. Like, we just never can stop eating. And if we try to, we just eat again. I like to eat things that I like. And when I like something, I eat a lot of it. Whenever I had something, like, on my mind or something, I wouldn't talk to my mom. I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would eat. And I ate so much of it that it just got out of control. We are definitely facing a time bomb, and it's already exploded. There are 75 million kids in the United States today. 25 million are overweight or obese. These kids have tried everything, and nothing has worked for them. Uh -huh. Wellspring's about getting kids to make choices that are healthier and constructive rather than destructive. Well, I want my daughter to live. <laughs> My heart breaks. This is just your starting weight. I know I had something to do with it. Good. Dad, get up, get up! This is pretty much my last resort. I mean, we were telling her, Emily, you're going to die. Can you stop? No. Then please go outside. I will. Oh. Ow. Do you trust me? Yeah. <gasps> like, I'm sick of being like, here, I can't. a new semester. Let's start off the year great and stay focused and remember why we're here and have a good year. Wellspring exists because there's an obesity epidemic in America. Wellspring is a boarding school that allows kids who have issues with their weight to be able to develop new habits. Parents have tried a lot of things. They've tried low-fat sort of some of the time. They've tried education sort of some of the time. They haven't tried radical change in lifestyle, focusing on this difficult behavioral problem. Of course, it doesn't make sense to send a kid away for four months of treatment if they're going to fall behind in academics. Before interface, sister going to separate. So we have them like a regular school from 6.30 in the morning until approximately 5.30 in the afternoon. Scotty Basso needs to lose about 150 pounds, and he needs to do it quickly. Other people, they don't know how to deal with it, and they don't even know how hard it is what you're going through, and it's, it's just really hard. I don't know that it's hit me, to be honest with you. I don't know that it will hit me until, until we leave. This is rough. We're 12 hours away. It's not like he's 25 minutes down the road at summer camp, you know? It'll be hard for him, myself, my wife, his little brother at home, but it's, it's what's best for him. He doesn't, you know, doesn't want to get, get up and go to school. He doesn't want to, you know, I don't want to say lazy because that's not the right term, but he just, he doesn't want to be around anyone. In school, I got picked on a lot. It, just, it felt like they didn't even want me there, and it got to the point where I didn't even want to go. He went from being a straight-A student to flunking. And he is a very intelligent young man. Look at him. He's just like, this is really my family. I don't know these people. <laughs> I, they just offered yeah, to give me a free oh ride, boy. so. He's, he's going to enjoy it. It's going to be a wonderful be learning enjoy. experience for him. It's going to be his life-changing experience. My husband and I had the lap band surgery back in April. We knew we had to do something for ourselves, and we thought if we did something for us, then in turn we can help Scott. The problem was the more weight that my husband and I have lost, the more depressed Scott has gotten. When I first saw Tanisha, I was scared. I have 34 kids that I have to take care of, and you don't want to have to take them to the hospital if they fall. Tanisha is super morbidly obese. No, my name's Curtis Harris. If she were to continue as she has, then it, it's frightening to think about what would happen to her. The super morbidly obese, or SMS students, are um, students that are 150 pounds to 200 pounds over what their body weight should be. It's, it's a very 
good feeling to know that, that we're going to make a difference for her and, and that the difference is probably the difference between life and death. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi, where, how are you? Mr. Melody. Brokey, nice to meet you. How you doing? Thank you. I've heard stories that they've helped other girls or other people. Um, that's why I brought Tanisha here. My husband has to take money out of his 401 retirement plan to pay for the school. $25,000. That's a lot of money. And I'm uh, hoping and praying that everything works out for Tanisha here. Well, I want my daughter to live. Hi. This is Tanisha. Hi. This is Tanisha. Hi, I'm Morgan. This is the right place for me to be right now. This is the place where I am going to get the help that I need. I was a normal child. I wasn't exactly overweight. Not as much as I am now. My body works against me. Insults, like under people's breath, that I'd still catch and looks. Okay. You're good, okay? They look at me as if I'm, I'm some kind of alien. I'm just taking it one step at a time. And before I know it, it'll be time for me to leave and I can, I can be with my family again the way that I want to be. Some of the kids that come here are pretty young, 11, 12, 13 years old, and being away from home for four months or more is, that's, that's a big change, big adjustment for everybody involved. Emily is 11 years old. She's the youngest student ever here at Wellspring. She weighs 216 pounds and needs to lose 100 pounds to get in a healthy weight. And she's at an age where this is critical to her success in life. Just who it is around me, <laughs> but that your family, <laughs> they told me that they wanted me to come here and it's like fun, but everyone's older than me and they really don't miss their parents as much. <laughs> my brother and sister are really thin and I don't have any weight problems and my mom is like 170 and my dad's like 210 and they're losing weight because they can. Emily's struggle with food, especially over the last several years, has been more of uh, food has been a crutch. It's been an addiction. You know, you can't lock your pantry and you can't put locks on the refrigerator. And we just, we couldn't seem to, to help her enough. If you're too big for this world, people notice and make fun of you. Really, it, it breaks your heart. I mean, we were point blank telling her, Emily, if we, if we don't get this issue with your overeating of food under control, you're gonna die. This is pretty much my last resort. We have to deep clean every weekend. The rooms can sometimes get really disgusting. Tarina, she's a very stubborn, tough individual, but that's how she was raised. I hate this place. Can you stop? No. Then please go outside. Tonight. I will. Okay. Like, even if I wasn't hungry, I would go to food. I would eat something big or eat something very sweet or with a lot of sugar and didn't really care what I ate or put in my body. Tarina comes from Florida in the Everglades and she has spent all of her life on the reservation there um, with the Seminole tribe. We were sent to Florida to die out by, I mean, no offense, by the white people. Her mother has been over 300 pounds and had a gastric bypass surgery and is now at a healthy weight. A majority of the people that are in her family struggle with being overweight. 
I'm African American and Native American, and both sides of my family are diabetic. So, Trina, yes. how does it feel to stay the whole year with me? <laughs> I don't know. I like it because I don't know somebody here, but I don't like it because I want to go home. Me too. I was, I guess you could say, chubby whenever I was a kid. I really didn't care whether I was big or fat or whatever you want to call it. Whenever I had something, like on my mind or something, I wouldn't talk to my mom, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I would eat, and that kind of was my, I guess my place to run was to eat. And then my dad passed away whenever I was 13, and I ate whenever I thought about it, and I didn't want to think about it, so all I did was eat. You must be Scott. He's got B, right? I'm Heather. Have you weighed in yet? This is the first one. Are you nervous? Oh, yeah. You can hop on whenever you want. So this is just your starting weight. Hang in there. Welcome. Weigh-ins are the measure of their weekly success. So when they get on there and they don't see a big change or the change that they want, that can be disappointing or it can really fuel them towards working harder. Good morning, Tanisha. With Tanisha's family, we were reported one thing by the parents and found out another as far as her weight goes. Can you step up? Weight was reported at 425. Her actual weight is 510. That's a huge difference. Coming up on Too Fat for 15, Fighting Back. Yeah, I've seen Scott coming around the corner right there and he's hobbling a little bit. It slipped in the mud, he says he sprained his ankle. I'm really hoping that uh, he's okay. And later. Monday mornings have an air of anxiety around because they're really measuring their success by the scale. Um, my fears is just like gaining weight back. You don't know how much weight you, you gain until you step on a scale. Wellspring attempts to help young people learn a new way of thinking about their weight problem. Someone going through Wellspring is no longer like their friends down the block. What we're trying to help kids understand is that you do have the power to control a lot more than you think you do once you change your thinking. Scotty Basso needs to lose about 150 pounds and he needs to do it quickly. My husband and I had the lap band surgery. The problem was the more weight that my husband and I have lost, the more depressed Scott has gotten. Other people, they don't know how hard it is what you're going through. When kids arrive, we take away those things that have stopped them from being active. Go through your luggage over here in this, in this classroom. Cell phones, computers, video games. Until the kids are ready to be able to incorporate those things back responsibly. What we're going to do when we go through your stuff. We're also looking for any contraband. We provide all the nutrition that our students need here, and there's no reason for outside sources. This is kind of my inspiration here. It's just my football jersey. I like to be able to fit back into it by the time I leave. My daughter's going to cry all the way home. No doubt. no doubt. This is the first time he's ever been away from home. I have to say, I, to quote my dad, mothered him, and now it's time to let him grow up.
The BCs, or behavioral coaches, are the people that help kids to transform from who they are when they came to who they're going to be for a lifetime of controlling their weight. Hey Scott, I'm Sally. I'm going to be your BC here. I'm Scotty's behavioral coach, which means I'm kind of like a, a school counselor for him. He comes to see me once a week for about an hour. Um, first, your pedometer, which um, I'm sure you've already seen or heard that we measure our steps each day. To we give them a pedometer, which gives them the ability to see what their actual steps are. And their goal is 10,000 steps a day, which is approximately five miles. This is your SMJ, which stands for your self-monitoring journal. So in here, you're just going to record your um, food intake for the day. Just write down the time that you eat, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, um, the food that you ate. So it could be like pancakes or cereal, the amount of calories, and then the fat right here. My heart breaks because I know I, I had something to do with it. You know, I, I know I did. I really need to try my life around and I'm ready and I just, I want this so bad. <laughs> I can't be the one to, to do it. He needs somebody other than me. You're gonna do good. I met with my church and we got a phone call that said, you get it all in motion, you get him there, and we are gonna help you get it paid for. And here we are today. He's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's just, it's just hard to leave him. <laughs> Nice meeting y'all all. It's the first day of the rest of his life. And I have to say I'm very proud of him. Like I'm gonna have my happy son back. I'm really having to focus in on Emily. It's scary that, I mean, you've only been alive 11 years and you've managed to get that out of shape and that unhealthy going to be a rough road if you're already, you know, 70 pounds overweight and you're 11. I think what caused me to gain the weight was just being, like, emotional, so emotional from getting teased. What happened today that made you so upset? All these emotions are just... You keep getting yourself so upset. She just keep thinking about home. <laughs> so hard. What's the, what are you thinking about? Being home with my family. But do you feel like the only thing that's gonna make it better is to go home? Or do you see that you think that you'll get over it and that you'll be okay here? Just to go home. Just to go home. Most of the time, I just listen. I think we've all been homesick, and I think this. she told me it's the hardest thing she's ever done, and I believe her. Can you smile? Did you know that when you smile, it automatically makes you happy just a little bit? I can't send her home, and that's what she wants, you know? So I have to try to distract her and um, give her as much love as I can. OK, we'll go play. At Wellspring, we have an immersion program, and it does separate their, the children from their parents, but it also separates them from a world that's antagonistic to their success as weight controllers. All right, so tune in for me, guys. Tune in. Basically, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start here. You're going to run all the way down there. You're going to go up a slight hill. We plant, you turn around, and you come meet me back on the bridge over there, and I will tell you what your time was. Do I expect you guys to run the entire time? Let's put it this way. If you can run the entire time, I want you to run the entire time. Okay, ready, set, go. Well, at the time, I was one of the components that we test the students on to measure the cardiovascular endurance. As for a student, when they first get here, it's not uncommon for them to run miles in you know, past 30 minutes. Uh, we actually had a number of students who run in past 45. And then we retest them every seven weeks. And it's amazing to see how much they actually drop. Scott, when we started, he says that he took a step, and on his first step, 
Uh, it's muddy out here, so it slipped in the mud. He says he sprained his ankle. Uh, he said he wanted to keep going, though. I told him he could turn around and stop if he's hurt, but kept going, and uh, I'm really hoping that uh, he's okay. So I forgot my inhaler, so I can't really push as hard as I could. Yeah, I'm gonna save my energy to the last part of the course. Good job, good job. All the way through. Right to that pole, right to that pole. 1536, good work. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. 1549, very good. Good job, guys. I think all my friends will be proud of me. Emily did very well, uh, but I did notice this when she did finish. She wasn't one of those students who was extremely, you know, oh. as they put it, I'm dying. She seemed fine. So that tells me that, you know, uh, she keeps working at it. She's gonna be okay. Yeah, seeing Scott coming around the corner right there and he's hobbling a little bit. One thing about the students that uh, come here is it's really hard to tell. Oh, he's running. Good job, Scott. Run right through me, Scott. Run right through. All the way through. You got to go all the way through the bridge. You got this. You went awesome. No problem, Scott. 2607. Very good, bud. Yeah. He does have that drive and he does have that initiative. I mean, kid sprained his ankle the first couple steps of the race and he's running that last straight array way around the corner because what'd he say? He wanted to finish. How's your ankle doing, bud? Still hurts. Good job, buddy. I just tried to go as hard as I could, get it over as fast as I could. He ran in 26.07. National average for it is 6.26 based on his age and his gender. So he's got some work to do, um, but it's a start. Good work. I'm very proud. Coming up. People are already measuring me. What is the matter with these people? I felt completely just embarrassed. Turn from there to there, so let go for a second. She didn't say a word, but I tell you what, I, I was devastated. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Being home with my family. I think we've all been homesick, and she told me it's the hardest thing she's ever done, and I believe her. Just to go home. Just to go home. All right, so tune in for me, guys. Tune in. You're going to run all the way down there. You're going to go up a slight hill. With plant, you turn around, and you come meet me back on the bridge over there, and I will tell you what your time was. Do I expect you guys to run the entire time? If you can run the entire time, I want you to run the entire time. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. 15.49, very good. Yeah, I've seen Scott coming around the corner right there and he's hobbling a little bit. It's just really hard to tell. Oh, he's running. You went awesome. No problem, Scott. 26.07. Very good, bud. I'm very proud. <laughs> All right, guys, so, hi. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take measurements from around your waist, around your hips, around your arms, around your shoulders, and around your thighs. The important part about measuring the kids is it's a tool that we use to help them out and gauge their overall level of fitness, their overall level of performance here while they're at Wellspring. A lot of times, guys, even though you're not losing the weight you want to, the weight that you want to lose is still coming off. And okay, you might have only lost 10 pounds, but guess what? You've lost five inches from around your waist. You've lost 10 inches from around your hip. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right. If you've been a 40 waist and now you're a 36 waist, um, you obviously feel that, but it's also just another accomplishment that you've done to show a reduction in numbers. Well, I've never been measured like this at all, ever. <laughs> okay, bring that fist closer to your head. This is all very scary, I think. I'm kind of uh, shell-shocked right now, like that 
Probably taking everything in, just kind of just watching. Come on over. So arms down, chest out. People are already measuring me. What is the matter with these people? For real. The tape couldn't even fit all the way around me. So we're talking from there to there, so let go for a second. I felt embarrassment. Thank you. Okay, now point to your belly button. He had to estimate the rest of the way, and I was just embarrassed. Literally four inches, okay. I would have been mortified, because that would really put it in perspective for me. Yes, I know I'm overweight, and I'm at a school with other kids that are overweight, but I'm also the only one in the four years we've been open here who has such a big waist the measuring tape can't fit around it. Off the top of my head, I think that is the largest waist and shoulders and hips we've ever had on a student here. I could, little friendly. Oh yeah, there you go. I just got like 15 hugs in three days. It's really weird. Man, I haven't gotten 15 hugs in my life. I'm not saying I want a hug, but I'm just saying, you know, you should be thankful. Okay. So 61. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I got it. 56. And 23. Here, I mean, everyone's going through the same problem, so it, you know, it makes it a lot easier. Uh -huh. 16 and a half. I know how to deal with it, and I really think it's gonna help. Yeah, Emily. All right, so I need you to point to your belly button for me. Because of my weight, it got to the point where, like, I couldn't, like, do activities. And, like, I was just, like, really tired, and I really knew that my weight was so unhealthy, and. I really have to do something to change it, or I'll die at an early age. Good work. You're done? Yeah. Uh, stretch your hamstrings and your lower back, guys. My what? Hamstrings. Your lower back. Your back of your legs. Ow. One of the five components of overall physical fitness is flexibility. So sit and reach is a really, really easy and simple test to help measure flexibility in the students. The sit and reach, we measure how many inches past their heels that they're able to get their fingers to. Hey, are you Tanisha? All right, I didn't have the most active parents in the whole world. They just sat me in front of an, the original Nintendo and I used to play that for hours and I ballooned all the way up to 200 pounds by the time I was nine. I was a big kid like a lot of these guys are. In seventh grade, I did wrestling. I lost 40 pounds uh, during wrestling season, and before you know it, by the time I hit the beginning of ninth grade, I was a normal weight. Three fourths of an inch, good work. Every year, I always tell them, you guys can do this. You can do it. Where they, and eventually, I really hope that they start to believe that. So, one, two, three. Reach forward, not down. There you go. When students first come here, it's not that they're just overweight. The problem is they haven't done activity in probably a great many deal of years. Okay, so give that a shot. Well, do your one, two, three. Oh, yeah. I'm not quite making it. Okay, that's okay. A little bit disappointed. Like, I didn't know I was not that flexible, like, because I've danced for so many years. Like, I thought it would have been more, because I know I was more flexible before I came here. work and teaching you one technique that I think will be very useful at this time when your emotions are kind of out of control. I basically coach the students through their program. You're really saying, you know, I really want to go home because I'm homesick or I'm miserable, but I think it's going to let you look at the bigger picture and kind of work on really thinking what's in your best interest while you're here. I teach them self-monitoring, goal setting, kind of looking at some of the behaviors that have kept them being overweight or struggling with their weight. And I know that Emily came up with a huge list of emotions that she was feeling about being here. So why don't you give them to me? Uh, it was like sad, insecure. Insecure, that's a huge one there, insecure. Miserable and disbelieving. Mis oh. Miserable, all right. But if I knew that I'm here and I'm sad, angry, frustrated, disbelieving, the obvious decision is I need to get out of here, right? Homesickness is not gonna last the whole time you're here. But in the meantime, you need to figure out a way to deal with that. The group makes me feel like so much better. You know, like, just like I have a ton of support already, but like mm -hmm. having a smaller group, like we can talk all about our emotions.
in order to get to the cafeteria, <laughs> you have to climb the hill. The hill doesn't get any easier if you walk it 100 times or you walk it once. That thing is by far the steepest hill I've ever seen. Ooh, this lovely hill. <laughs> well, the hill has kicked my butt. Whoa, I, um, I went down it today. Oh, and that was hard enough. I cannot imagine climbing up it. So the hill is just one more great way for kids to connect the dots. Uh, you make it up the hill, you get to eat. I watch them every day walk up and down that hill with ease. And I'm so envious. See you lunch, Ninja. Bye. I have something called Blount's disease. That means that my legs, they are uh, bend inwardly, and so I've had a lot of surgeries to fix the bending, uh, and I have a lot of scars. Blouse disease can happen to anyone, but the reason, in my case, it was so advanced, uh, it was because of my weight. I, I can't remember even the exact number of surgeries I've had. With someone like Tanisha, we just have to take extra precautions for her safety. So, you know, if we have to transport her up the hill until um, it's comfortable for her to be able to do that on her own, then that's something that, that we accommodate. When I first arrived, I was in transport, felt relief. I do want to be on transport. Uh, it's just a matter of believing in myself that I can do it. Most of our students have complicated relationships with food. Most of the time, we see students who use it as an emotional filler. What we're trying to do here is to help them see that there's this whole world of food that they haven't explored, primarily fruits and vegetables. Before I came here, well, my favorite foods were probably like, like chips and stuff. Like, I, I love carbs and stuff, so like bread and pasta. I would eat like a bowl of cereal that is probably a really sugary cereal most of the time. This bread called fry bread. Oh my god, you have to have it. And it's like, <laughs> this is basically grease. <laughs> I love chicken. I like chicken, which isn't good at all. I'm just getting a pineapple. So I don't like the other fruits in here. How do you like the food? Yeah. Not exactly a fan of the sweet potato fries. It'll get better, I promise. Okay, so, uh, so what's your favorite food? Pizza. Mwah. Perfect. I've been here for two months and it's lost 47 pounds. Every week it's just been getting better and better. My first week, lost nine pounds that week. I've been working really, really hard. And the times I haven't, well, I was still working. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, just know you'll do really, really great. And just, you just have to keep working. What's the hardest, really hardest part of the day? Uh, probably just getting up in the morning, dude. Coming up. Shoot, 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 shoot. See that basket right there? Yep. All I want you to do, let them feed you, shoot that ball up there. That is your thing. Right. All right. I was thinking, what in the world? have I gotten myself into.
gonna be a rough road if you're already, you know, 70 pounds overweight and you're 11. I know that Emily came up with a huge list of emotions that she was feeling about being here. Uh, it was like sad, insecure. If I knew that I'm here and I'm sad, angry, frustrated, disbelieving, the obvious decision is I need to get out of here, right? The hill doesn't get any easier if you walk it 100 times or you walk it once. I watch them every day, walk up and down that hill with ease, and I'm so envious. With someone like Tanisha, we just have to transport her up the hill until um, it's comfortable for her to be able to do that on her own. It's just a matter of believing in myself that I can do it. They have three segments of PE, three different PE classes throughout the day. Yeah! And that starts at seven o'clock. They all meet down at the courts. I've had students tell me before that they feel left out of participating in activities. There are certain elements of their self-esteem that do get affected from that. I remember thinking, this is gonna kill me. That's what I thought. The problem is, is a lot of our students actually come in here and it blows my mind, but they've never picked up a basketball before in their life. I can't even remember the last time I played sports at home. Our first team sports, we were playing basketball. <laughs> so the first challenge about that wasn't even playing basketball. It was actually walking to the other side of the court. I never thought I'd be able to do it at all. I walked across the court. I sat down three or four times. In this game especially, you don't have to move too much. You, know, you can stand, catch the ball, and just pass it. Here's what I want you to do. You see that basket right there? Yep. All I want you to do, let them feed you, shoot that ball up there. That's what you do. All right. That is your thing. All right. All right. I was thinking in my mind, oh my God, what in the world have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Stop! Stop! She couldn't stay in a basketball game longer than maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute tops, before she had to sit down. I couldn't even be in and play for a whole minute. I definitely felt angry with myself. The legs hurt. Okay. okay. My first week here, it was just tough, and I was so homesick, and I actually enjoy doing the sports now, and, like, the weight loss is so like worth it. I promise you, it's going to get way better. It was hard, but I felt determined to be able to eventually do it. Can you give it a try for a minute? Yeah. After she's up for five minutes, she wants back in. Um, I want to try again. Tanisha is nothing if not determined. Yep. Oh, Tanisha! All I want you to do, pick a side. All I want you to do is just put it in the hoop. That's it. OK, they're going to get you the ball. All right? She made a basket. I mean, everybody went crazy. Uh, I thought that that was great. Yeah. I've never scored a basket in a game. Game, light up, shake hands. 
it's amazing to me to see it paying off because it's hard work, hardest thing I've ever done. And I hope to keep giving it everything I have. Coming up. We have weigh-in at Wellspring every Monday morning. Real nervous just for the fact that we have weigh-in. You're basing everything you're putting into your life on what number's gonna show up on that scale. Stand really still for me, it's moving around. I allow myself to feel nothing until afterwards. We have weigh-in at Wellspring every Monday morning. We do it once a week to kind of assess the progress that the student has made in the past seven days. Are you nervous? Yeah. Monday mornings have an air of anxiety around them around here because weigh-in is so important for kids. They're, they're really measuring their success by the scale. I'm real nervous on Monday mornings just for the fact that we have weigh-in from 6.30 when I wake up until after I've been waiting, I allow myself to feel nothing. I think the reason tensions are so high is because you're basing everything you're putting into on what number's gonna show up on that scale. Um, my fear is just like gaining weight back. A lot of people are like, if you worry, really worry about it, like it's gonna happen, so don't like stress, but I worry anyway. <laughs> Whenever you know you're gaining weight, but you don't know how much weight you, you gain until you step on a scale, yeah, I guess scary. Morning, Scotty. And this week, 343.5. Good job. My goals are basically to get down to 250 pounds at least. It's still not a healthy weight, but it's a very good goal for here. And then just to keep, you know, working on it and eventually within a year or two to be 150 pounds again. Good morning, Emily. This week, 196.5. Good job. When I first came here, I was like really upset. I just wanted to go home and then you know, I started realizing, like, this is just for the good. Well, they just started losing weight. That was, like, worth it. Any guesses? No, you can just get on. OK. 225.5. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. My self-esteem is better. I used to look in a mirror and just, like, for a good two seconds and then just leave. But now I can stand in the mirror for, like, hours. Good morning, Tanisha. Do you need a hand? Yeah. OK. And be really still, because this scale floats all over the place. I just try to stay calm. And <sighs> hope for a good number. 476. Oh, really? That's yeah. really good. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> starting to feel the difference. It's like, wow, <laughs> it's actually happening. It's a great feeling. Slow and steady wins the race. On the next episode of Too Fat for 15, Fighting Back. Ice is the devil. Oh! For Tanisha, any little fall could be life-threatening. We're going to stick on the program. We're going to try to, for the most part. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> they missed their flight, I guess, and they weren't guaranteed to have a standby, so they decided to wait till tomorrow. Mine tastes like heaven. Okay, one. I mean, I've been working hard like ever since I got here, but like I'm really committed to everything, so like I'm feeling a lot more positive. High five. Thank you. Her vibrant, beautiful personality is back. Scotty's got to be watched all the time. Scotty, you got a minute. Scotty really struggles to get up in the morning. And it's never really his fault. Even though it really is. <laughs>